Video games have come a long way since the early days. Most people would probably attribute this to the evolution of hardware, but there is so much more to it than just that. The way we make video games have completely changed as well. Like for example, lately we see that games are being released in an unfinished state and are really badly optimized. Uh, when I meant games changed a lot, I did not necessarily mean in a good way. You see, we yearn for ever improving graphics, and while hardware does indeed progress like more predicted, which seems to be holding up to even this day, graphics will get better. But do we not care about users with lower end computers? Also, Moore's law won't hold true forever, which he stated himself. As we are reaching physical limits, the progress of hardware will begin falling off. So we need to optimize. But how? I am sure that even if you are not familiar with game development, you are aware of some of the ways performance is squeezed out of games. Let me first show you what not to do. Be me, a curious 14 year old who wants to make a first person shooter. It's the early 2010s, ok, it's like what are you even doing if you haven't tried making an FPS game around then. So you open Unity and throw something together where you somehow manage to break the laws of physics in ways you've never imagined. Then you are like, hmm, let's win the quintessential element of any FPS game, a door. So you open some 3D software and make a door. A transform cube will pretty much do. As for the handle, hmm, let's extrude the cut in another cube and slam a subdivision surface on it. Nice. Couldn't be simpler. Let's quickly import it to Unity. I'll just make a few copies of it and let's try out the game. And I have 20 something FPS. So I guess it's quiz time. What did I do wrong? Well, it's kind of a trick question because it's actually none of those. If we go back to Cinema 4D and take a look at the number of polygons on the handle, we see that it has over 3 million of them. That is ridiculously high. We need to keep this number in check. Why? Well, to understand, first you need to know how the average render engine works. Let me present to you the render engine in one minute. Let's go. First, we need an API to communicate between the CPU and GPU like OpenGL. The CPU sends the following three data, attributes, uniforms and textures. The attributes contain information about how the mesh should be rendered using vertices, normals and UVs. Uniforms detect the world, local and camera space of the mesh. The texture is obviously used to color the object. All of this data is then fed into a shader inside the GPU. This shader is comprised of the following parts. Vertex, Fragment, Tessellation and Geometry. First, the per vertex operations are performed, which alter the shape of the object, because it's from the vertices that the primitives, aka the triangles, are formed. Any of which happen to fall off the screen are discarded. The ones that remain go through tessellation for continuity across the surface and are also rasterized and colored in the fragment shader with the appropriate texture based on the UV maps for the mesh. Additionally, the geometry shader can add more vertices based on our needs. The mesh is the most commonly lit with diffuse lighting based on the light direction, material colors and normal vectors, but on top of this we have specular, emissive and ambient lighting too. Oof, did you get all that? Good, me neither, but it's fine. All you have to understand is that the number of triangles have to be kept at a minimum. This is what gives older games that characteristic look with all the edges. Next, let's talk about materials. Materials actually make up a good portion of the size of modern games. They are also responsible for most of the memory usage. The obvious way to improve performance here is to make them smaller and compress them. Reserve large scale textures only for objects that are important and are in the focus of the game. Since objects generally require multiple textures to look good, channel packing is a neat trick used in most engines to save on RAM and sampling operations. Basically, instead of having the textures separate, they are packed into the different channels of one file. So this is cool and all, but we have barely scratched the surface so far. These were just the basics, the tip of the iceberg. We shall now dive under to explore the advanced stuff. Starting with LOD, or level of detail. This is an old technique where one object will receive one or multiple reduced polycon version of itself that we progressively iterate through the further the object is from the camera, as it's not like we could see small details on distant objects. The problem with this method is the work you have to put in to create all the models. For some time now, people have tried to make this all automatic and dynamic, but it wasn't until Unreal Engine 5 that we got a really impressive solution called Nanite. Nanite reduces triangles dynamically, allowing close objects to be highly detailed, and gets rid of the nasty line between LODs, as those are not required anymore. Everything is lit evenly with their Lumen illumination system. Talking about lighting, 
The biggest step forward in recent years was ray tracing, aka real time lighting. Rays have been chased since 3D software has been a thing, so basically since forever. The key difference here is this being real time. Ray tracing is still difficult to incorporate into a game without having to kill the rest of the settings though, so we still have some ways to go there. But then there is black magic like DLSS. AI is showing up everywhere lately and it's being used to upscale images too. Nvidia is upscaling real time gameplay essentially using AI, and who knows what other ways AI will make its way into games. But now, we are quite deep, but it's time to go even deeper. Code. Write one unnecessary if statement and you can throw all your optimizations out the window. But how do we tell if a piece of code is slow? Once again, it's a game of numbers. Let me present to you the big O notation. This tells you how complex an algorithm is by showing how the number of operations grow as the size of the input data grows. Uh, let me tell you a story. There is this game I used to play that isn't dying or anything, or at least that's what the devs like to think. Anyway, it had a cool little easter egg with a blinking light. It looked like Morse code, so I tried translating it only to realize that there were no pauses, which is kind of needed to tell where letters end and begin. Sounded like a fun puzzle though, so I tried writing a program for it. Don't worry, this will lead us back to the big O and code optimization in due time. So, my idea was to make every possible combination of spaces and translate all of them. How do you do that though? One day in a boring class, I had an idea. Use binary numbers. Let's make a binary number as long as many spaces there could be in the word and say that every one is a space and every zero is not a space. Then just count up and you will get every combination. I pitched the idea to my friend who made quick work of this. The code may not be the nicest thing you've ever seen, but we made it in our first year of learning code, so I think it's alright. From here, it was as simple as translating each word and checking against all English words. I found a TXT with 370,000 of them. After doing some tests, it seemed like it was working, so I guess it was time to try it with the real code. Alright, ah, this will take a while because we are checking 262,000 variations against the entire 370,000 word list. That's nearly 97 billion checks. But hey, we got our word. Dunkirk? The game does have a ship named Dunkirk, but apparently the messages are related to the current update of the game. And the time this code is from has not much to do with Dunkirk, so I don't actually really know what the code is supposed to be. Even online people don't really seem to agree. Anyway, to get back on point, this code has exponential time complexity with a big O notation no better than 2 to the power of n, due to the binary getting twice as large with each increase in length. Increasing the character count by just 3 already gives us 770 billion checks. Another 3 characters and we have 6 trillion combinations, which would take years to go through. Which may remind you of how passwords become near impossible to brute force if they are long enough. Now you may be wondering, how can we make it faster? Well one specific thing that could help this code is the fact that modern CPUs have multiple cores. We can split simple tasks among the cores to compute them in parallel. This becomes most useful in games with a lot of simulation like tycoons and city builders. Take into account however, that you cannot just throw multi-threading at anything. For example, in my code, multi-threading is actually slower sometimes, probably due to the overhead that threading comes with, as well as the nature of the task among other things. Also maybe because I suck at coding. But for this reason, I collabed with my friend again who had an idea. What if I told you that this problem has a linear solution? Our approach back then was all wrong. Let's instead just translate the list of words to spaceless mores and just look up our code. This way, the worst case scenario is if we have to check all the words in the list, but even that only takes a few milliseconds, even with really long words. That's a pretty good optimization I would say. Now I won't be getting into translating entire sentences because that's really hard actually, and my head already hurts. So what did we learn with all of this? Well, the game optimization is hard. Blame falls not usually on the game artists and programmers, but rather management. Game dev hell is not something that contractors are familiar with, and thus the crunch and tight deadlines force the devs to cut corners. 
Notice how most games that usually release in an unoptimized state had also been delayed. Remember that you vote with your wallet, so vote for the games that are in the state that you want to see them in.